at the end of the day, it's not really about looks. It looks awful. Uh, but using kerosene and a buttload of bubble wrap there, I'm gonna teach you how to survive Japan's notoriously cold apartments. Hello, people of the world. This is Jason is Lost, Japanese culture, adventure, and of course, surviving the winter here in Japan. Uh, I live in Fukushima Prefecture. This is just north of Tokyo, about an hour or so on the Shinkansen. It is noticeably colder here. Um, I've experienced so much more snow, had so many more strong winds than uh, anything I've experienced in Tokyo. Um, I don't actually need this scarf because I followed the steps that I'm about to teach you in staying warm here. So let's start small. These are Cairo. Uh, these are heat pads. I showed you these in a previous video in Sapporo. Uh, they're like little tea bags. You give them a rub and a shake. Eventually they heat up and they last for hours. They're really good. Stick them in your um, pockets or your socks or your underwear are uh, really effective. Everyone uses these, they're very popular. They sell them everywhere, but this isn't gonna cut it at home. So why do I have a can of kerosene and a buttload of bubble wrap over there? Well, Japan's homes and apartments are rarely insulated and the windows, single pane. These aren't double glazed. Why? Well, there's a few different reasons, but for one, energy efficiency ratings and regulations are a pretty recent concept here. And so with so many apartments built 10, 20, 30 years ago, the priority was always on keeping costs as low as possible. In a country where earthquakes are this common, the focus was always keeping the cost of building and rebuilding as low and affordable as possible. And if you want to stay warm, well, those costs are passed on to the tenant. So most homes do have air conditioning, but we'll get onto that in a moment. First, what can we do about the insulation? So let's look at what is gonna be your biggest problem, your windows, your glass paned sliding doors. Uh, they're gonna be huge, they're gonna be not double glazed, and it's gonna be a really awful time with the glass acting as a giant ice cube, putting you through a lot of cold and misery. So what have I got going on here? Curtains, uh, you'll probably move into a place, uh, turn up and not have curtains already there. I had to buy these. Luckily the curtain rail was already there, so that's fine. Um, these windows, these doors are so huge, it doesn't ali align to a typical pair of curtains. Uh, I could not buy a pair to fit this size. So I had to buy one really big curtain twice uh, and that created the pair. Um, they're too long. They're really big, uh, but it was the only way I could do it. Um, and these are pretty cool. There's all sorts of places where you can buy curtains. Um, next. You might not have shoji. Um, I do. It's very cool. It's a very nice aesthetic. Uh, these are two sliding doors. Um, but again, this is just paper uh, and wood. And uh, it's hardly insulation. Uh, it's something. Um, but uh, I'm definitely grateful that uh, we have this here. You might just have this, no curtains, no shoji, no divider or anything like that. Um, just a single pane of glass and uh, again, this is huge. It's, so it's a huge area, it's most of the wall with just a single pane of non um, double glazed glass. So what we need to do is uh, insulate this somehow. So you're probably curious about all the bubble wrap. It's gonna go on the glass and it's gonna insulate it, stop it being a big ice cube for the room. Another big problem here is all around the glass there, you've got this metal edging. Uh, it attracts a lot of condensation, gets really, really cold, just as bad as the glass. So we need to cover that. Uh, we've got this uh, seal tape, skimmer tape stuff. Uh, I've seen it in grey, I've seen it in white, not black unfortunately, it's not too pretty. Uh, so you just cut this up, paste it all around the metal edges, uh, greatly reduces the metal surface area, uh, reduces the condensation, and uh, it's another little thing you can do. And also, you've probably got a bit of a draft as well, and this is skimmer tape. This is very padded tape that you can just stick up against the uh, sides of the doors where the draft is coming in. Of course, I've already measured the thing and I've already got the pre-cut out bubble wrap to put it straight up here. And how do we get this bubble wrap to stay in contact with the glass? Just water, you can use a spray bottle. This is really handy. And now that we've got a good layer of water on there, 
to make it stick and stay there. Just going to paste the flat side against the glass. There we go, wonderful. That's just sticking there. I'm going to use a bit of tape at the top and uh, the sides, the bottom, just to secure it a bit more. Uh, but this is a really effective insulation. All of the air pockets uh, act as a little barrier uh, between the cold of outside and uh, secures the room a little bit more, which is really cool. Uh, you're going to have some air bubbles. You're not going to get it perfect. You could spend ages if you want leveling it all out and making it look pretty. Uh, but the whole solution at the end of the day, it's not really about looks. It looks awful. Uh, but for the cold in Japan, this is really, really, really necessary and really useful. But on top of all this, we also have the front door. As you're aware, apartments in Japan can be very, very small, sometimes just a box room that opens out onto the street. Uh, my apartment could be considered one long room. Uh, I've got some wooden dividers that slide back and forth in the middle uh, and they can separate it into two. I've got my wood floored room here, got the bathroom, uh, mostly storage, the kitchen, cupboards and stuff. Then I've got the comfy room, that's tatami floor, my bed's in there, uh, that's where the AC is, that's where my kerosene heater is, that's the nice comfy warm room. But slide back one of the panels, step out into here, freezing cold because this door opens straight out onto the street and uh, it's metal, big chunk of metal, it's getting all the weather, all the cold from outside, turns into an ice cube and freezes this place basically. You're also going to get a draft around the edge through the post box. What you'll see here, I've got some foam. More use of this skimmer tape, it's really good uh, to create a really good seal. Uh, it's a bit tight to close uh, when you first do it, but it gets used to it. And we're just gonna do the same thing here. Get some water on here. Right, excellent. I'm gonna give this a little bit of a taper and uh, clean it up, bit of tape on there, but it's gonna make a world of difference. This isn't even really a cheat. This practice is so widespread that you'll go into hardware stores or home stores or even the 100 yen stores and you'll see pre-made kits of pre-cut bubble wrap, uh, special tape all prepared for you to stick on your windows. So perhaps you're feeling less of the chill now, but how about actually heating the place? So yes, most homes do typically have air conditioning units uh, and they're pretty effective. They circulate hot air. They've got the dual use in the summer but they do end up typically being the most expensive option. In the summer, with the humidity that I can barely survive, I need that AC running, and my electricity bill doubles, and I don't want that to happen in winter too. Now, some people do like electric heaters. Uh, they're good, they're handy if you're staying in one spot, but I've never really found them effective. They radiate heat, but they don't seem to fill the air with heat at all. So what you'll see most often are these. This is a Toyu heater, a Toyu Japanese for kerosene, or as we say in the UK, paraffin. Uh, really effective. It's got a fan inside that blows out the hot air. Really, really good. Much heavier than I thought it was. Now, most important is that you keep this thing ventilated. This is burning fuel. Uh, if you're using it in short amounts and it's near to the extractor fan, that will probably be fine with the extractor fan there. I keep the heater quite far away from the kitchen area. So what I'd recommend is actually cracking a window, leaving a window open a bit. That sounds counterintuitive with the uh, cold, uh, but that's how effective these heaters are. They counteract any chill or breeze uh, coming in with that necessary fresh air. Having said that, I was definitely a little apprehensive about keeping flammable fuel in a can and using it in my apartment. So here is my Toyu heater, my kerosene heater that I found in the cupboard. Um, in here you've got a can, a tank that uh, you get a special pump uh, thing, adapter, and one end connects to this and the other connects to your tank of um, kerosene and then you put it in here. Yikes. And here we are, here's my uh, pump, my kerosene pump, uh, looking quite bizarre and interesting in all its tubey purple goodness. And so this has a special detector that um, uh, doesn't overflow it. It's got a little cradle so it could just sit on your jerry can.
And here we are with the tank full. Uh, the pump turned itself off uh, as it got to this point and I just had to replace the cap and uh, be curious to see how long this lasts, how much use you get through one whole tank. Um, so let's stick it back in and see how we get on and hopefully this isn't the last video <laughs> you see. Uh... There is a noticeable smell for sure, uh, absolutely when you're handling the kerosene and filling it and stuff, uh, and a little bit when you turn the heater off. You've been burning fuel so it lingers a little, uh, but honestly you get used to it and, and it's such an effective heater, it kind of makes up for any of the minor points against using it. And for the Toyo itself, you just take your can to the local petrol station, or gas station, sorry, or a hardware store, they have the pumps as well. Uh, they'll fill up the tank, just ask for Mantan, Japanese for full tank, and that's what, 18 litres, comes up to uh, just less than 2,000 yen, so it's not too expensive. And I've had to go maybe once every three weeks or so. Um, so it, I find it affordable, really effective heater, definitely recommended. And lastly, if you've made it this far into the video, I'd always recommend a pair of slipper boots. Uh, slipper boots are awesome. I've been wearing these the whole time, highly recommended. So there we are for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope I've helped you warm up a bit and survive the winter. And as always, I'm looking forward to hearing from you. What tips do you have for surviving the winter where you are? please let me know in the comments below. I do look forward to reading them and I respond to everyone. After clicking that like button below, please make sure you head over to twitch.tv slash Jason is lost and give me a follow. Uh, we're gonna be building Gundam, playing games. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Do make sure you check me out there. And if you're in the position to support the channel, please do check out the links below in the description, Patreon, coffee, all of that stuff. I greatly appreciate your help. Thank you. So stay tuned for more videos about Japan and my life here, my adventures, my traveling, uh, of course, building Gundam and looking at odd toys and all sorts of novelty stuff. Uh, I have a lot of fun here and I hope you will too. Do check out my other videos. I'm sure you'll find something interesting or informative. Uh, there's all sorts of things on there. Um, I'll leave it there, but I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Bye. So, what you'll most often see are...